So what are you most excited about for the future of Chase Cards? Well, there's lots of things I'm excited about. In fact, this year we just launched nine new products. So I'm super excited to watch those grow. And then we have a number of different digital innovations on the horizon to just make our customer experience better and better. And what re uh, end of the range are the new products that you launched this year? Are they at the high end like Sapphire Reserve or are they on the more everyday products? The majority of them were within our co-brand portfolio mm -hmm. and they ranged across our co-brand portfolio. So we did a new United card uh, just last week, a new Southwest card. We did Aer Lingus as an example. Uh, and so, and then we also uh, announced a new Inc. business card as well. So one on the branded side for small business, the rest on the partner side. And how do you pick partners? for Chase Cards? Oh, that is a great question. We actually are the number one co-brand portfolio in the U.S. and super proud of our partners. And so we think about a number of things. One is certainly the quality of the partner. And we have, uh, like I said, a tremendous uh, portfolio in terms of quality of names that we have. Um, we also think about scale of the distribution. So very often when we at Chase partner with other businesses, it's often for those businesses to bring their capabilities to our distribution in the card business is actually the other way around. So we want to be able to take advantage of our partner's distribution with our credit card products. And when you think about how consumers choose cards, what do you think makes them choose one card over another? Yeah, it's a great question because we're often asked about our partner business versus our branded business. And so for us, it's about customer choice. In other asset classes, uh, like mortgage, for example, people typically have one mortgage. They may have a home equity loan, but they typically have one mortgage. Or in auto, they have one auto loan. With credit cards, people have four or five cards in their wallet. And they're typically quite deliberate about how they fill their wallet. So a, a uh, customer may be interested in a cash back uh, value proposition. They may be interested in a travel and entertainment value proposition like in Sapphire or they may have an affinity for a brand and that may be a hotel it may be an airline uh, or in our case a retailer like Amazon and what are you seeing in fraud and trends like in 2018 what fraud should I be worried about worried about as a credit card user Right. Generally speaking, well, first of all, fraud is something that uh, we will always, always have to be dealing with. And uh, it's a little bit like whack-a-mole in the sense that if you shut it down in one place, it appears in another. And so what we've seen, broadly speaking, in terms of a trend is as we've introduced the new chip cards, as you may know with your own cards, that has dramatically reduced point of sale fraud, uh, physical point of sale fraud and counterfeit fraud because those chips are very, very difficult to replicate. And now we see fraud in the e-commerce space. And is fraud generally up or down across the board? I would say it has shifted dramatically, and then on average, it is it is it is down, but still, but will always be elevated. And what's the state of credit in the U.S. and where is that going? So uh, we feel really good about the state of the U.S. consumer right now. Balance sheets are very strong. The job market is very strong. Absolute levels of debt are increasing, but as a percentage of household income, and we call that the debt service burden of, uh, of a U.S. household, that is still very manageable. So we feel great about where the U.S. consumer is right now from a credit perspective. It's critically important for us, given the size of our portfolio, that we manage this on a surgical basis. And so, of course, there's always going to be pockets that we're looking at and pulling back from, but generally speaking, feel very good about the U.S. consumer. And in the second quarter results, J.P. Morgan um, announced a charge of $330 million based on people redeeming faster than anticipated. Mm -hmm. Are credit card users getting more efficient and smarter? Is this going to be an ongoing trend? I think so. I mean, it's it's a secular shift in terms of the value proposition of credit cards being about the rewards. And so I think customers are just much more aware of the rewards that are available to them and therefore using them more. For us, it's not about the cost of the, the points. It's about the increase in redemptions. And so for us, that tells us that we have a more engaged customer. And so while a $300 million charge is what it is to us, there's a very good news story in terms of the engagement that we're seeing from our customers. Fire Reserve is a great example where we've seen lower attrition than we had anticipated and higher engagement than we had anticipated. And in the area of Sapphire Reserve, cards that like those very high-end cards, is that a profitable venture and does it matter if it is? 
it is a profitable venture. The way you, we have to look at it is at the portfolio level. And so uh, with Sapphire Reserve, that's, that's one example where you have a de novo product launch that actually takes years for us to really understand the returns associated with that product. Um, but certainly they are uh, and can be very profitable. Importantly, what Sapphire Reserve has showed us is, is like I said, very low attrition, very high engagement, and actually brand equity that is really hard to quantify. We have an entire Sapphire portfolio outside of Sapphire Reserve. We have Sapphire Preferred and then a no-fee product. And both of those we've seen lift just in terms of the brand equity that Sapphire Reserve has created. And then, of course, for us at J.P. Morgan Chase, these customers are incredibly value to the, valuable to the broader franchise. And so we really think about it from that perspective as we think about the potential for the profitability.